my name is Sean Darrington. I'm on the product management team uh, here at Google Cloud in our storage group. Um, okay, so a little bit of an overview uh, before we dive into uh, some of the details. One of the things that we've done is we've really been thinking about, particularly over the last few months, we've done a lot of testing, a lot of work with some of our larger customers that are trying to figure out how to optimize uh, their training, checkpointing, and serving workloads. And so what we're going to do today is dive into a little bit about more details with that. But before that, I want to set up the stage of many of you may have seen this concept of the AI hypercomputer. Uh, it's really a system and a collection of hardware and software that we at Google Cloud are thinking about how do we help customers solve and get jobs done for them. Number one, if you look down at the bottom, that's the hardware layer. Uh, we have arguably the broadest portfolio of accelerators across GPUs and TPUs. Uh, each are appropriate for different workloads based upon what the customer requirements are. And storage in the bottom middle uh, is the most important one, obviously. Uh, so we're going to focus the most time there today. And on the right-hand side, our networking capabilities are some of the best in terms of our optical circuits, but also the fact that Google Cloud has our entire network. So you can have very predictable points of presence and have you're on the same network throughout the world, regardless of what you're doing. We also work with a variety of the framework packages. Again, depending upon if you're on GKE or GCE, you can use the appropriate framework package like JAX and PyTorch, et cetera. Uh, at the, uh, just above that, you'll see Vertex AI. Uh, this is our managed service offering that customers can use. And depending upon what you're doing, if you're building and training your own LLM or if you're just consuming it in other ways, uh, there are lots of ways to leverage Vertex as a managed service. Uh, and then at the top, we also work with customers to give them the best way to optimize those resources. That is, how much they're going to pay, when do they need it, how much they're going to commit to. And we've recently introduced a dyna the dynamic workload scheduler, which gives a little bit of the best of both worlds where you can subscribe and say, I want this many resources in a particular region, but not just yet, but I want them now. And so there's a lot of flexibility about how we're giving customers the ability to procure accelerator and compute resources. So with that, there's obviously a lot of things as you think about the AI pipeline stages that you need to think about from the data preparation all the way to the right-hand side of the archiving. Today, we're gonna to focus on that middle portion, uh, the training, checkpointing, and serving. Um, this Monday, on the 30th of September, uh, we just released Parallel Store, that is now generally available, which is exciting. We announced this at Next uh, in the fall, but now this is our first managed parallel file system that customers can use. Um, and we'll get into the details about where and why you'd use that. Uh, and where and why you'd use cloud storage, which many of you know is the uh, kind of the, the bedrock of most storage in the cloud in terms of what you're going to do. But there are some trade-offs between those two different technologies. On the right-hand side, you see Hyperdisk ML. Uh, this is also relatively new. Uh, this one GA back in July of this year. Uh, and this is our uh, read-only block storage service that allows multiple hosts to attach and have access to the same data. So it's a unique and different proposition than just generally Hyperdisk or persistent disk has, particularly in the context of AI. And you can see RESTful Vision there. Uh, they're actually using Parallel Store now to do some unique things with 8K video transcription and transcoding for football in, in Europe, uh, or soccer if you're here in the US. Uh, but they give the coaches and players and the viewers real-time analytics for the AI plat platform to decode that 8K and then make recommendations and optimization for viewerships. So I mentioned the three before. There are, we, have, we have a broad portfolio of storage solutions across NFS, parallel file system, and object. Uh, file store and NetApp volumes uh, are two of the things. And you'll hear Raj, as I mentioned at the beginning, just a moment ago, talk about NetApp volumes in the context of Vertex AI. But you'll notice if you look at that performance band, we have a wide spectrum of capabilities from tens of gigabytes per second all the way up to more than terabytes uh, per second. The other important, to think about, other important thing to think about with the data selection and the different storage technology is whether it's persistent storage or scratch storage. You'll see Parallel Store is actually a scratch storage solution. It's built off on and uses our lever, uh, local SSD. You have to think about how you're going to get data in and out of cloud storage. And you'll see a little bit later as we dive into this capability about how you need to think about scratch parallel file system. The other thing, if you look at the right-hand side, we do have an open ecosystem uh, at Google Cloud. And so in the marketplace, we have another partner, SciComp. Uh, they have an offering storage scale based upon GPFS, which is available in both a persistent or scratch uh, parallel file system deployment, depending upon, again, the needs of what you have. And we'll go into details about how that works with cloud storage uh, as well. But these are the opportunities to think about the right storage solution for the right customer. And if you think about where we are, with customers coming to us and asking, you know, hey, I'd like to do training job X, or I, I have this model size of Y. There's a lot of uncertainty from the customer's perspective about what they need. And so what we've begun to do is try to frame the decision for them to think about how they're gonna choose the right storage solution. 
uh, for this. And there are a couple of three, uh, three main things to think about. Number one, uh, the training data set size. This is not just the total training data set because it might be a petabyte of capacity, but you might be breaking up into smaller training jobs. And so as you think about each training job, you want to think about what and where that storage solution is going to fit. And I'll go into a little more detail on that in a second. Um, you can also think about the checkpoints uh, and the size of your model and the number of parameters are largely going to influence what those checkpoint sizes are. Are they gigabytes or are they in some maybe even terabytes of capacity? But then you also need to think about how frequently are you taking the checkpoints and why are you taking the checkpoints? Are they just ephemeral during that training job run or do you want to actually write them out to like cloud storage for persistence and storage that's going to remain for the archive for the length of that model's uh, viability, right? The last is the inference and serving. Again, the number of parameters in your model is going to dictate largely what that model size is that you're going to load and serve to uh, your VMs. At the same time, you want to think about the periodicity, about how frequently you're updating that model. Uh, and that's going to sometimes influence, again, the storage decision that you might use for that. As you're thinking about these three things between training, checkpoint, and serving, there is some things to think about being consistent in terms of which solution you're using for training and checkpointing. You may also want to use that for serving as opposed to using three different storage solutions and trying to optimize that. So there's a complexity and trade-off that you want to make as you're thinking about that uh, across the portfolio. And the last thing is the frameworks, right? Different companies are clearly at different scale. If you look at like Anthropic uh, and Meta and others, uh, and even Google, we are on the hero scale side of things, right? On the far right, where you're talking trillions of parameters, you're talking about petabytes of capacity. That is a very unique situation where you're going to want to do hand-holding, specific optimization, lots of planning and testing. As you get into the kind of the medium scale, this is where you can see some of the characteristics in terms of maybe, you know, 5,000 or so H100s or TPUs or whatever. Um, but you're also looking at the capacity. Uh, maybe it's 100 terabytes or so. And then on the small scale, uh, it's obviously less than that. And so different storage solutions can meet each of those three. And that's kind of what we start, what we tried to put together here as you start to think about a few characteristics. And again, I tried to keep it relatively simple because it does get complicated pretty quickly as you think about it. Uh, but if you look at the overall latency of your training jobs, um, if you have sub millisecond or millisecond latency requirements, you know, that's where the parallel file systems comes into play. Um, and you'll notice that cloud storage is greater than 30 millisecond for uh, training jobs. But this is also one of the things that it's a trade off between object storage in terms of very high throughput versus latency. And again, file systems versus object. And so this is one of the things that I'll, I'll point out here that file store um, is really on the uh, really suitable for that small scale, uh, largely because of the latency, but also because of just the storage capacity requirements. Uh, it's less than 100 terabytes of capacity. It's kind of the easy button of using NFS for some of the smaller scale training jobs, 50 nodes, maybe less. Uh, but as you start to think about the capacities that exceed 100 terabytes or the next throughput requirement here is 25, 26 gigabytes a second, all the way up to at the bottom there, north of one and a half terabytes or 1.2 terabytes per second. And you see cloud storage fits the bill for a lot of the other requirements that customers have in that medium and large scale hero scale uh, training requirements. Uh, so this is one of the things that we've been thinking about in terms of how do we begin to break down and give customers some guidance to think about which storage solution is gonna fit their needs. And again, coming back to the consistency of maybe using the same solution, if you're coming and using object storage on premises and you wanna to move to cloud, that's gonna be kind of the easy button. Or if you're using a parallel file system on premises and you wanna to move to the cloud, uh, come to Google Cloud, you now have Parallel Store or SciComp as an example to keep, kind of keep things the same way, but leverage and get H100s, which you may not be able to get on premises, right? And so these are some of the things that we've been thinking about. And so with that, I wanted to wrap up and then we'll dive deeper into each of the recommendations. You have Parallel Store and you have Storage Scale, which is GPFS. And you're going to get into the details on these two. I'm kind of surprised by you putting up a parallel file store that's not as it's that doesn't fit up with what GPFS does. So, are you going to talk about that then? Yeah. We'll okay. Talk about that detail. And just for this first segment of the recording, uh, so parallel store is built on Deus. And, and so this is our first okay. connection of this. Okay. So this is why, you know, it's like 1 uh, 125 gigabytes a second, about 100 terabytes. So think of this as V1. Uh, and then those customers that have requirements elsewhere, that's where we're looking to the marketplace and our partners like Storage Scale, which has been 
around for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Right? And actually, uh, uh, Dean, who is going to be talking a little bit, actually worked at IBM on GPMF. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's much more of a tried and true, fully tested, mature product.